Corner is brought to you by the Miller Brewing Company, sole sponsor of the U.S. Olympic Training Center. By Mitsubishi Motors, Mitsubishi, perfecting the experience. And by NatWest USA, the people and the resources you need today and tomorrow. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to Connors Corner. And we're going to have as our special guest, Roger McDowell, who came in the ball game, did such a great job in relief to save the game for Ron Darling. We'll look at the highlights of the ball game, also talk with Wally Backman, and the scores will be coming your way in a moment right after this message from Miller Lite Beer. Hey, guys, great barbecue. Yeah, plenty of Miller Lite. Have a can, Rodney. This one's empty. Mighty fine playing, Jim. Wasn't me. Something tells me we're not alone in the universe. Take it up! I shot the way Hey, you're right, Numa. I wonder what they want. Probably our Miller Lite, because it tastes great. That's silly. Hey, Slay! Look! Doomed. I tell you, we don't have no respect. So this is Earth, huh? Where are the girls? Wow! Well, what a pack of handsome guys! No matter where you're from, there's only one light beer. Miller Light. <laughs> I tell you, it's not easy being us. Huh? Oh, what a crowd! What a crowd! Well, our guest in the show here this afternoon, Roger McDowell. Roger, is that the basic dress for a relief pitcher day? <laughs> After, uh, after throwing uh, a hard inning and two-thirds, uh, this is the way you dress, yes. One well, other question that I have for you. Uh, the other day, they had uh, Smokey the Bear out here, mm -hmm. and it was Fire Prevention Week or month or whatever. And of all people to accept the award, you start, you start more fires than anybody I've ever seen. You put out a few, too, though. Well, yeah, there's a, a basic premise uh, for every fire you put out the fire. So, you know, Smokey's the guy that I go to whenever I do a hot foot or anything like that. Because every time you look down that uh, dugout, there's a fire going on. Yeah, there's been uh, a few times when the cameras caught it, but uh, <laughs> you know we always forewarn. We always forewarn Bill Webb when it's going to happen. That's right. You always got him in the act. Well, Roger, a great job today coming in with uh, runners at first and third and one out. The Mets leading by a score of four to two in the ball game, and you got the next two batters. Mitch Webster, the first batter. We'll look at that on replay. And uh, you got him on a pop-up. That's unusual for you. Very much so, because Mitch Webster uh, is a fast runner. Uh, we weren't sure that we would be able to get the play if we got the ground ball. I just wanted to get ahead of him. Uh, fortunately, he popped it up, and uh, Wally was talking to me, because I always get ground balls for Wally, so uh, I got him a fly ball this time. Then you got the grounder as Hubie Brooks came up right here, and not an easy play for Magadan. No, not at all. Uh, Hubie's got a little speed, and uh, Dave had to get rid of the ball very quickly. That saved the ball game, your 17th save of the year. And earlier in the year, you had a few problems in relief and uh, any reason for things changing around? Well, I think uh, the big thing is that uh, Mel has talked to me as far as my mechanics are concerned. Uh, earlier in the year, I was uh, maybe trying to throw too hard, and I'm not a power type pitcher. I'm a, a finesse ground ball pitcher that relies heavily on my infielder. So I need to get back to that situation. And, and the way I do that is trying not to throw so hard and trying to stay within myself and keep the ball down. Like most sinker ball pitches, when you throw hard, it straightens out. Exactly. It straightens out, and uh, it goes a long way. Well, Roger, congratulations. The Mets with a fine homestand. You had a big part in it, as the Mets were 7-3 and three in this homestand. Outstanding homestand, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to continue Chicago. On the Chicago for four-game series there. Roger McDowell, and we'll return to talk to Wally Backman in just a moment, right after this message from Mitsubishi Motors. <laughs> Well, our second guest this afternoon, Wally Backman. Wally, of course, the second baseman for the New York Mets against uh, right-hand pitching. And, Wally, it's been a, a rather tough year for you after a great year last year at 320, but uh, it seems like you're getting it back in stride now. Well, I feel that I'm swinging the bat a lot better. Average-wise, it really isn't showing yet. I, I have struggled. I struggled basically the first three months of the season. And finally, Bill and Buddy, uh, who have been watching me all season long, finally said, you know, you've, you've got to get your bat laid back down. Uh, my bat was more upright this year early in the year and, and I was struggling. I was missing pitches that I should have been hitting. Uh, and since I've laid it back down, I haven't had a lot of success, but I have hit the ball on the nose. I feel a lot better. I'm getting to pitches that, that normally I wasn't getting to, the pitches that I was getting to last year and hitting them hard. 
and I'm, I'm starting to hit the ball hard again, and, and that's, as long as I'm hitting the ball hard, I can't complain, I guess. You hit it hard three times a day and didn't get a base hit. Yeah, you know, that's that's just part of the game. Guys made some good plays out there, and you, you've got to take the good with the bad, I guess. One of the things about Wally Backman, he legged out, uh, not a base hit, but he kept out of a double play and got the Mets a run in the first uh, scoring opportunity the Mets had, and then also had two stolen bases. We're going to look at that, and I guess, uh, Wally, your hamstring is no problem now. Well, it's, it's feeling a lot better. I'm just going to basically run the rest of the year, get on base, and try to make some things happen for Keith, try to get in scoring position for him. Right here, you go in with the pitch. You make it easy. Your ninth stolen base of the year right there, and it set it up for the Mets to come in to a strong scoring position. And now your tenth stolen base. Ten out of 12, and that's not bad. And uh, of course, with you and the leadoff batter, whether it be Mookie Wilson or Lenny Dykstra, on base and stealing bases, it's got to help the Mets in the in the long run. Well, I think early in the year, Lenny didn't steal very much at all, and I wasn't running much when my leg was hurt. Uh, you know, I think it's a big key for us to run. We've got to get in a scoring position for Keith and Darrell and those guys to be able to drive us in. And when we do run, uh, it shows that we win a lot of ball games, and so I think the key for Lenny, myself, and Mookie is to, soon when we do get on, is to steal some bases, try to make some things happen. And they certainly did happen for the Mets here today as they won it by a score of 4-2. to two. And Wally, I know we got to get you a bus, so we'll let you go, and thanks for coming on. Thanks. Wally back, and we'll be back to look at the highlights of the ball game. We'll also check out the scoreboard right after this message from NatWest USA. <laughs> Well, the Mets winning by a score of 4-2. to two. Let's check out the highlights of the ball game. With one out in the top of the third, Seber on second base. He had doubled for the first hit off Ron Darling. This good play by Santana picks up an out, but the Expos pick up a run and take the lead 1-0. The Expos 44 and 19 in games where they have scored the first run. The Mets come back to tie it up as the Expos try for the double play. Backman going down the line in a hurry, and on the play, Santana comes in to score. It's now 1-1. Now a strawberry on basis, error at the uh, hit and run play, I should say, by Mookie Wilson. And uh, coming around to score on the air by the outfielder is Daryl Strawberry. The Mets take a lead by a score of two to one. And now this play as they get Mookie in a rundown. Mookie gets out of the rundown as Seber fails to cover at third. Mookie gets spiked in the play but stays in the ball game. And that set it up for the Mets to come up with some more runs. In the bottom of the fourth, the runners at second and third. Santana hits a sacrifice fly to the outfield, and Mookie tags up and comes in the score, and the Mets take a lead by a score of three to one. And in the bottom of the fifth, with two men out, runners on first and second, Mookie gets a blue pit to center field, and Backman comes in the score after the stolen base, and the Mets lead by a score of four to one. In the top of the sixth inning, Hubie Brooks, the batter, and right here, he takes a fastball right down the middle by Ron Darling. Not happy about it, as that is strikeout number eight for Ron Darling. He did not get any more in the ball game. Then in the top of the eighth inning with one on, nobody out, Wallace Johnson bounces up the middle, and it's cut off by Santana. Great play. It proves to be the play of the ball game as the Expos continue to hit the ball hard off Ron Darling. Right here, a single to the outfield scores a run. And Reigns on the base hit goes into second and gets a double as he stretches that single into a double. Good play by Tim Reigns. And now right here with McDowell in the ball game, a ground out for the final out of the inning. And they get out of the jam and lead the ball game by a score of four to two. So the Mets won it, and it was a great win for the Mets. They now have won seven of ten on this homestand, go on the road for a four-game series, and then come right back to Shea next Tuesday. And don't forget our Miller Lite contest is still on. It continues through the month of August, and right now, here's how you can enter and win. You can win along with the Mets in our Miller Lite Kiner's Corner Contest by filling out the official entry blank available at your participating Miller Lite retailer, or print your name and address and phone number on the postcard and send it to Miller Lite to WORTV, 9 Broadcast Plaza, Secaucus, New Jersey, 07094. On each Kiner's Corner show, a lucky fan will win four tickets to an upcoming Mets game. All entries will be eligible for the grand prize of two season tickets for the Mets 1988 season. That address again is Miller Light Contest, WWOR-TV, 9 Broadcast Plaza, Secaucus, New Jersey, 07094. And we'll return to look at the scoreboard right after this message from Miller Genuine 
draft beer. Well, the Mets won it by a score of 4-2. to two. They moved to within five games of the St. Louis Cardinals and Montreal in losing. They drop another half game back, and they're now seven and a half games behind St. Louis. In the National League, one other game finished, and that's the Philadelphia-Chicago game in Philadelphia, and Philadelphia in a wild ball game, won it by a score of 13 to seven. Phillies got three in the first. Cubs then had the lead after two and a half innings, leading five to three. The Phillies got the lead back at six to five. The Cubs tied it up at 6-6, and the Phillies got ahead 7-6. The Cubs tied it at 7-7. Then Philadelphia with six runs in the bottom of the eighth inning won it. A grand slam home run by Juan Samuel, his 22nd home run of the year. And the winning pitcher was Calhoun in that ball game, his record 1-1. One one. The losing pitcher was Ed Leach, and uh, his record now stands at 1-7. Dawson got his 35th home run in the third inning with two men on base. Hayes got his 19th home run. Denier got his fifth home run. And the grand slammer by Sam Weld, the big hit in the ball game, the game-winning RBI. So a big game win for the Philadelphia Phillies against the Chicago Cubs, 13-7. Houston underway in San Francisco, and it's no score after one half inning. San Francisco batting in the bottom of the first inning. And Mike Scott on the mound for Houston against uh, Hamaker, and that game will be continuing on. St. Louis scheduled against Pittsburgh in a night ball game. McGrain, the scheduled pitcher for the Cardinals, against Bob Walk. Atlanta playing San Diego. Cincinnati playing the Dodgers. Over in the American League, Texas playing Milwaukee at the end of five innings of play. It's 4-0 in favor of Texas. Paul Molitor extended his hitting streak to 27 games, the longest in the major leagues this year. And uh, a good job by Paul Molitor. Detroit, nothing. Chicago coming up. Robinson against LaPointe. Oakland scheduled against Seattle. The Yankees are playing in Kansas City. Roden on the mound for the Yankees. And he'll be opposed by Lee Brandt. Cleveland playing Baltimore. Toronto against Boston. And California against Minnesota. And we have our contest winner for the day. The Miller Light contest winner is Mrs. Arlene Dunn from Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey, and she will receive four tickets to a future Mets game. Well, the Mets winning by a score of four to two, a big win for the Mets. They close out the homestand with a record of seven wins and 10 losses. They go to Chicago. Our next broadcast will be on Friday afternoon. We'll be on the air at four o'clock, and we hope you can be with us then. So once again, the final score, the Mets four, and the Montreal Expos two. Miner's Corner has been brought to you by Miller Genuine Draft. It's beer at its best. By Mitsubishi Motors. Mitsubishi, perfecting the experience. And by NatWest USA, the people and the resources you need today and tomorrow. Ralph Kiner's guests will receive a gift from Littman Jewelers, the Northeast's largest jewelers, a quartz watch by Pulsar, and a gift of Chanel's fine line of 35mm automatic cameras. Available now at Sight and Sound. All New Jersey locations and 47th Street photo here in New York. Or at the authorized Shannon dealer nearest you. Shannon, the great unknown. Kiner's Corner produced by Bill Webb and Carl Cherkin. Directed by Bill Webb.